Hello, and welcome to another edition of, The Prime Report. I'm your host, Pamela Prime with another hard-hitting story. Today's show is about mind crimes. A mind crime is usually a reference to any visual, audio or vibrational stimulus that influences or controls the human brain. We are bombarded with stimuli every day, from advertising, music, movies, TV shows and websites of all kinds. But before we get into the where, let us get into the how. From the late 1800s, science has dabbled in visual and audio frequency responses in humans. Some frequencies, especially when used together, can make you hungry, activate emotional responses and alter moods. Among the many triggered responses this neuroscience can squeeze from unsuspecting brains, the scariest are recklessness, rage, confusion, unconsciousness while awake, and can even mimic the effects of illegal narcotics. Let's begin with visual stimulants. Suggestive subliminal displays can be hidden faintly on advertising, packaging, media and on signs in alternate light spectrums to convey the message without catching your attention. A visual stimulant can be stationary or moving, and can be combined with audio tones or frequencies to achieve a desired response from viewers. To demonstrate the power of visual frequencies, I am about to show you a picture. It is just that, a picture. It does not move, but if you look directly at the outer edge of the spirals, most viewers will see motion from the center area, within their peripheral vision due to their brain completing the spiral motion indicated in the picture. This is a harmless way to show you how our brain sees a lot more than what our conscience can perceive. Do not participate if you are prone to seizures. Take a look for yourselves. More about visual displays in a moment. As for audio stimulants, they are much harder to spot. Most frequencies used for mental intrusion are under 1000 Hz, with many falling out of human hearing range altogether. These subliminal, or neural frequencies, can be hidden in music, in movies, even behind my voice, without the listeners being aware. The science is so advanced now, that some levels of mind control can be easily achieved, urging you to work harder, to buy more, to consume and to be obedient. This technology has made its way into the workplace with fluorescent lighting, designed to hum and flicker at desired frequencies. This is a typical fluorescent light, found in any office, public building or workplace. Only when filmed at 240 frames per second, does the pattern pulsing become visually evident. Now the same light, filmed at 1000 frames per second. This flickering or pulsing is engineered into these bulbs and the ballasts that power them. Along with a low-frequency hum, the flickering can influence brainwaves to favor certain actions. They promote obedience, productivity and also behavior. We found the same results in compact fluorescence as well as LED replacement bulbs. This technology is present in every TV show, commercial, movie and some of your favorite websites. But the worst fact of all is, flicker rates and levels are actually governed by the FCC as to what can be presented to you, the public. It is nearly impossible to avoid this technology in day-to-day -day life. Some companies use this technology in relaxation or affirmation products that are used by millions, while other companies use it to market, to control or to make dangerous digital drugs. You heard that right, I said digital drugs. These digital drugs combine audio and visual stimuli to subdue the user. These drugs are easily found online, and come in doses, which are merely video clips or mp3 recordings. Using binaural frequencies to generate brainwave responses, they can mimic intoxication or the physical highs from such drugs as marijuana, heroin and cocaine. The typical digital junkie can be found in middle American households with children over the age of 7. The effects can vary greatly, depending on the user's brainwave patterns. These doses can be dangerous to many who use them. Seizures, violent rage and terror are average side effects of having a bad experience. Isolated incidents of permanently affected users are on the rise. Recently, disturbing cases of demon-like possessions have arose from eye dosing. Let's take a look at a recent incident. Please be warned, the images you are about to see are graphic and include a great deal of foul language. The young lady you see here is only 14 years old. 
She is listening to a popular idos called, Gates of Hades, which is easily found, and downloaded from the internet. She covers her eyes for deeper immersion into the experience, and she seizes every time she idoses. This young man is 17, he also seizes when he idoses and has developed facial twitching from neural path interference. He is now suffering from cerebral stimulation addiction, due to repeated idosing. Finally, we have the Arizona incident, where a teen gathering yielded a shocking result from a boy who I dosed. Halfway through a dosing session, he began to seize, and from that, he transgresses into something usually reserved for Hollywood movies. He spoke in several old languages, sometimes simultaneously, while emitting a rumbling growl most of the time. The crowd thought this was funny, until he grew uncontrollable, and injured numerous others at the party. Digital drug incidents like this have grown from mere urban legends, to attracting the attention of major religions. Please pardon the noise, we checked it for safety, as it is an audible part of the dose that can be heard once the headphones were unplugged. The powerful hidden commands behind these are doses, or behind the soft music played by your favorite retail stores is still unclear. His neck's gonna be hurt, dude. Look at you, beat that. As you see, he demonstrates strength near double that of a normal teen. Either real or programmed, this behavior is frightening. And it was spurred on from the brain stimulation of digital dope he scored free online. This technology is used by many governments for the purposes of espionage, torture and the reprogramming of dissident citizens. <laughs> No, dude, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all they want. That's all they want. He's good. Dude. Now, where's your story? How did we come out? Oh, fuck, dude. Wait, 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 wait. English. English. Speak in English. Speak in English. Who wants to do it? Hey, try to do the cross. English, motherfucker. Is this Latin? English, you really eh? Are you the devil? Are you the devil? That's a yes. <laughs> Are you the devil? I'll do the cross over <laughs> wow, that was some gripping footage. Now that you are aware of the problems audiovisual mind crime can present to you, your family, and freedoms, it is time to start recognizing and controlling the impulses these mind crimes invoke in you every day. Does your child exhibit signs of drug use when you know they are clean? Do you impulse buy or spend money when you cannot afford it? Do you impulse eat while watching television? Do you impulse rage for no reason? 
you may very well be the victim of a mind crime. Information is currency, and you just got paid people. Special thanks to the Prime Target Security Channel and NCH Software for making today's show possible. I am Pamela Prime, and this has been another edition of the Prime Report. From Security Plaza Inside Studio 1A, I bring you the news, as real as it gets. Goodbye now.